worksheets on absolute dating. What you will need, your reference table, your PowerPoint notes. Number one, which radioactive substance would probably be used in dating the recent remains of a plant found in sedimentary deposits? Looking at our PowerPoint notes, a sample containing the remains of living organisms is likely to contain radioactive carbon-14. Number one is A, carbon-14. Number two, why is carbon-14 not usually used to accurately date objects more than 50,000 years old? Carbon can date samples no older than about 50,000 years. After all those half-lives, there is too little carbon-14 left to date it. The graph shows that after 28,650 years, the amount of carbon-14 has been reduced down to a very small amount. By the time you get to 50,000 years, the amount of carbon-14 is too little to detect. Number three, if the radioactive material were cut into pieces, the half-life of each piece would be. The half-life of a radioactive substance is not determined by the amount of material, just the material itself. So carbon-14 always has a half-life of 5,700 years. For example, it doesn't matter what size it is, carbon-14 will always have the same half-life. Your PowerPoint notes point out that the half-life for any element is not affected by environmental conditions, such as temperature, pressure, or chemical combinations, and we could even add the amount of material you actually have. Number four, a rock contains uranium-238, which has a half-life of 4.5 times 10 to the 9 years. If the rock is crushed or heated, the half-life of the uranium-238 it contains will. This goes back to the idea just discussed on the PowerPoint. The half-life for any element is not affected by environmental conditions such as temperature, pressure, or chemical combinations. Number five, why are radioactive materials useful for measuring geological time? Since each one of these isotopes decays at a specific rate, regardless of conditions like temperature, pressure, or chemical combinations, or even the amount, as we said, the disintegration of radioactive materials occurs at a predictable rate. Number six, which radioactive element is best suited for determining the age of wooden tools used by prehistoric humans during the last ice age? First clue, is the mention of wooden tools. Wooden tools are considered to be organic and to find the age of organic remains we use carbon-14. Something extra to note, the last ice age. In the reference table it notes that the last ice age occurred in the recent past, about 22,000 years ago. Since carbon-14 can date samples no older than 50,000 years, it fits that it would be able to identify wooden tools that came from the last ice age. Which radioactive element has a half-life of 4.5 billion years? On the Earth Science Reference Table, uranium is listed as having a half-life of 4.5 times 10 to the 9th years, which is 4.5 billion years. Worksheet 2, Absolute Dating 2. The table below gives information about the radioactive decay of carbon-14. Part of the table has been deliberately left blank. On the table, we have half-lives, we have percent of original carbon-14, and the number of years. To figure out the percent, if we start off with 100%, or one whole amount, after one half-life, we have a half, after two, we have a quarter, after three, we have an eighth, after four, we have one sixteenth, after five, we have one thirty-second, one sixty-fourth, and then one one hundred and twenty-eighth. For the number of years, carbon-14 goes 0, 5,700, 11,400, 17,100. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,700 years. To fill in the chart over here, we either add 5,700 to each column, or we multiply 4 times 5,700, 5 times 5,700, 6 times 5,700, 7 times 5,700. After how many years will 1 128th of a gram of the original carbon-14 remain? 39,900 years. A rock contains uranium-238, which has a half-life of 4.5 times 10 to the 9th years. If the rock is crushed and heated, the half-life of the uranium-238 it contains will remain the same. Number three, if the amount of carbon-14 in the original sample has been... 48 grams, about how much carbon-14 would have been left after 17,100 years. I can take 
17,100 years and divided by 5,700 years to find out that over the course of this amount of time, the carbon-14 has undergone three half-lives. In this case, we started off with 48 grams of carbon-14. After one half-life, we would have 24 grams. After two half-lives, we would have 12 grams. After three half-lives, we would have six grams. Number four, a sample of rock contained 100 grams of potassium-40 when it was formed. Today, the rock contains 50 grams of potassium-40. What is the age of the rock? In this case, we started off with 100 grams of potassium 40 we now have 50 grams of potassium 40 which is half the original amount which means that one half life of time has gone by the reference table states that one half life for potassium 40 is 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years since we've gone through one half life letter a would be the appropriate answer number five the graph shows the decay of a radioactive material over the over time how long does it take for this radioactive material to go through two half-lives. In two half-lives, the original sample of 100% would have dropped down to 25%. On the chart, 25% intersects the line right over here. Dropping down to the bottom, I see that registers at 10 times 10 to the third years. Number six, due to radioactive decay, an igneous rock sample now contains one-fourth of the amount of potassium-40 that it originally contained. The age in years of this rock sample is approximately. If I started off with 100%, after one half-life I'd have 50% or half. After two half-lives I've had 25% or a quarter of the original. So I can see that this igneous rock has been around to at least gone through two half-lives. And each half-life is 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years. So 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years times two gives me 2.6 times 10 to the ninth years. Supplemental Absolute Dating 3 Directions Complete the chart below which represents a model of a radioactive sample with a half-life of 5,700 years. The boxes labeled carbon-14 represent an undecayed radioactive material. After each half-life, shade in the appropriate number of boxes to represent the decayed nitrogen-14. So we have half-lives here, we have the number of years, we have unstable carbon-14 and stable N14. So one half-life we should know is 5,700 years. Two half-lives, we add another 5,700 years to that, we get 11,400. Or we could take two times 5,700, we get the same thing. At three half-lives, three half-lives we're up to 17,100. If we start off with 24 grams, after one half-life we would have 12 grams left. After two half-lives we would have six grams left. After three half-lives, we would have three grams left. Now, as the amount of carbon-14 goes down, the amount of nitrogen-14 goes up. So we started off with 24 grams. If we have 12 grams left of carbon-14, we must have 12 grams now of nitrogen-14. 12 plus 12 gives us 24. If we started off with 24 and we're down to 6 grams of carbon-14, 24 minus 6 gives us 18 grams of nitrogen-14. If we started off with 24 grams of carbon-14 and now have three, we would have 21 grams of nitrogen-14. For filling in the boxes here, all the boxes remain blank. So after one half-life, we have 12 grams of carbon-14, 12 grams of nitrogen-14. I've shaded in 12 boxes to represent the nitrogen-14. After two half-lives, we have six grams of carbon-14, 18 grams of nitrogen-14. I've shaded in the 18 boxes here to represent the nitrogen-14. After three half-lives, we have three grams of carbon-14, 21 grams of nitrogen-14. I've shaded in the 21 boxes to represent the nitrogen-14. Question, why is carbon-14 used to date recent remains and not rocks that date back to early Earth? As mentioned before, carbon can date samples no older than 50,000 years. After all those half-lives, there's too little carbon-14 to date it. So carbon-14 has a short half-life, 5,700 years. And after 50,000 years, the amount of carbon-14 is too small to accurately measure.